Hi, uh, viewers. If you've uh, Googled Vision Express and seen this video, well, here's some uh, lessons to learn. Uh, uh, particularly when you're elderly and uh, you go in there for a free optician uh, checkup. And uh, I've just got my latest one uh, emailed to me. Because I'm having some new glasses made, but not at Vision Express. Because uh, the last time, four years ago, it cost me 575 pounds. That's been costing me the price of three pints of milk a week for four years. Three pounds fifty a week. It's a lot of money. To spend over four years. It's 50p a day. Would you put 50p into a piggy bank that you drop off every month at uh, Vision Express just to put on your glasses? So, being a pensioner, you know, you can save up money, but it takes many months. And these are the glasses. They picked out for me, Ralph Lauren, Polo, plastic. Not deep enough for the variable focal. But you can see here, there's a little bent corner. See that bent bit of metal there? You probably can't see it so well. It's just a piece of metal that wraps around the whole frame, goes around the top of the frame to the edge and then inside the plastic. Now that's been bent to manufacture, but I fell over and pulled the frame and bent the corner. So when I went to bend it a right angle again, it broke. So it was clearly not designed to bend, it's meant to be rigid, but it was so small that it, just on, on falling over, I was able to bend it. And so when I bent it, straightened it, it broke. And that's metal fatigue or a very tiny piece of metal that's not fit for purpose. Now, it's fine as long as you don't have an accident, but you have accidents with glasses and you don't expect them to break. But if they do bend, you expect to be able to straighten them. So they shouldn't break and they shouldn't bend unless you can straighten them. So I photographed it and took them into Canary Wharf, where I bought them. I'm so sorry, I dropped it. I wanted to show you the card. So never go to Canary Wharf. They've got new staff there. Young man at the desk. I brought in the glasses and I wanted to speak to somebody, you know, an optician, not just somebody serving at the desk. He said, no, sit down with me. And he looked at me and he wouldn't say anything. He, he went on about, you know, they're broken. There's nothing we can do about it. So he wasn't trained the sale of goods eh? on customer services. So I asked them for a manager. They didn't have a manager. But they sent me a, a, a Romanian deputy manager, whose name I haven't got. But Marion Till, who sold me the glasses, dispensing optician, the opticians are marvelous. They're exceptional in the way they treat you. and bought me these beautiful glasses. And this is the top of the range glasses. I guess they might be more expensive. Now if they're top of the range, they have to last. They can't break. They can't wear out. Now they're going to slowly um, scratch, so you can have them polished. But they can't fail. Goods can't fail. 
and have to spend another 575 pounds for another four short years at 50p a day. Now that's, uh, you can have a swim for that. So luckily for us now, we can talk to each other and warn each other. So you can write to Mr. Jonathan Lawson, the chief executive of Vision Express, jonathan.lawson at visionexpress.com, 0844 Phone him up on my behalf and say, look, this poor old man, he's on three tiny pensions and he doesn't have another for 575. He's at Ruddington Fields Business Park, Mearway, Ruddington, Not Not Nottingham, England, NG11697. And the company number, because uh, if they owe you money and they don't pay you, the government can foreclose on the company and shut them down, 02189907. Now, the directors are also liable if criminal offences occur. Simon Richard Hope is facing criminal prosecution along with the, the staff at uh, Vision Express and Canary Wharf. And Jonathan, not Jonathan Lawson, he's the chief executive. Omar Hassan, Jonathan Robert Lawson, Stephen Mark Noble. It was established in 1987, not long ago. So the frames were Polo, 145 pounds. The Zeiss lenses, 250, 225 pounds. 525 pounds. What? For plastic? Now, I didn't know that you get them cheaper. Now, I'm going to tell you where to go and get them cheaper. Now, there's Tesco's and Asda, but they're still going to be expensive by the time you've got all the add-ons. And you've got to go in. But I found um, a place called, um, on another page, called, here we are. And it's sold mainly online. They've only got a couple of shops, but they seem to have good uh, PR. And it's called selectspecs.com. But there you have to pay extra. But I can buy variable focal lenses for 50 pounds and frames for 10 pounds included. I used to buy these glasses here for 10 pounds in Tesco's off a shelf. You go in with your own prescription and have two, one for close and one for long sight. And I might do that again. So what do you, how do I get my money back? How do I get them fixed? Well, you can see I fixed them. I've glued them. I went to my mechanic and he couldn't weld them. So he said, glue them. So I've glued them. But when I saw the manageress, she didn't make any offer under the Sale of Goods Act and said no to everything that I hadn't asked her. So when I realized I wasn't going to get anywhere, I don't, you don't argue with people. You don't have an argument because this is professional. She wanted to chat on about what, I, what they wouldn't do. Now, so what you do is you ask for the, man, the manufacturer's address. And you contact the manufacturer, Polo, say, now I'm going to put a YouTube video up telling the public never to buy your glasses because they break. Unless, of course, you replace them for free or for £10. Now, the, the four years old, and they showed me some more when I was in there, and the steel bits that are screwed in in a hinge, you know, with a, a screw in it, not a bent piece of metal that can suffer. Uh, the stress of putting them on and off, metal fatigue, and then one day break. So <laughs> my little uh, camera's 
having some fun playing up. But I uh, hope it's recording. Yes, I think so. So, um, so I explained to her that you know I had rights under the Sale of Goods Act, but she didn't make any offers. And she said she'd e phone me up with the address of the manufacturer or distributor, and I left her there. Went off and tried to get it welded, lost the arm and found it, and then spent the night gluing it together. So look up uh, the websites that uh, give you help with consumer problems, such as uh, 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 Citizens Advice, that's the one I got, and they help you write the letter. So I gave them the details when I purchased it, the invoice. Price of goods, 729 but they, they gave me a discount. Compensation requested, 575 and you give them a date. So if they don't do it with that date, then you can take legal action. You've got to give them notice within 28 days so I can go elsewhere to replace them. They don't, they don't want to replace them. As your new staff, after 20 years of top service, have lost my goodwill, showing me no empathy to my plight. You know, broken pair of glasses, you can't wear them. By both staff, I met on the 1st of the 11th, 2015. Or, if they don't pay me, I will claim full damages of up to £10,000. That's, you know, 20 times the cost of their glasses. In the small claims court. Now, this is why I'm emailing you. You do it via Money Claim Online. It's just a website that the, law, that the courts have set up. Like you, Instead of going to the police station, you can report it online to the Met Police on their website. Yeah, but minor things. So you join it, you sign in, you put all the details in, you pay the £50, £200 fee, and they send the summons from their computer in Northampton to these guys in Northampton claiming you know two thousand five thousand pounds because you listen to what I've written and you'll realize they're very stupid in taking us on now that we have the law on and we can communicate and they think oh Christ I'm not paying him I'll offer him uh, 300 pounds if we want to keep our profit so you get this the defense back so you can take the three hundred pounds, or you can carry on. Now the beauty of money claim online is that you just don't then go to court. You can put it. You put in another claim, another summons. You have two bites at the cherry, and this time you know how much to put in. And then they send a real summons from the nearest county court, and then they're stuffed. Because you know what their response is. And then they put it on a defense. And then if they have not upped it to 2000 then you take them to court. But if you win on all the points that are related to fraudulent misrepresentation, and you have evidence of fraud, then they go to prison for up to 10 years. Now that's the gamble they're going to take. If you put that in your emails, as well as the nice letter uh, asking for the money and giving them time to pay, if you point all, out all the frauds that they've committed, then they've got the gamble of they don't pay you and offer you enough to stop you going to court. Then you go to court, you win, and then you've got evidence of the fraud in court. And then you just get a summons form from the courts and summons them to the Crown Court to be indicted for the frauds. And if there's no evidence, well, they won't indict them. But if you've got this evidence from the county court, they committed fraudulent misrepresentation, etc.
by not getting the uh, address so I could get a reduced price frames, she caused uh, that was withholding information, fraud by withholding information. Let me read you the letter, and uh, you sit back and enjoy. But they haven't trained their new staff, especially in Canary Wharf. So never go to their shop in Canary Wharf. But I'd be wary of any shop because they haven't put up a sign to all their staff in the staff room. Customers are king. Offer them a deal immediately to keep their goodwill. They're making so much money, they don't care if they lose one person. Because they don't break every day. Dear Mr. Jonathan Lawson and directors, I bent the metal corner of the frame by accident, and when I tried to straighten it, the metal snapped from metal fatigue with the arm falling off. Can you show them pictures? There's no dispute. My rights depend on whether the item should have lasted this long, four years, because they say, oh, I'm sorry, it's out of warranty, the one year. You still protect it. Listen. It was particularly expensive and was sold by dispensing optician Marion Till as high quality, premium, or top of the range. So it's got to be of merchantable quality to last 10, 15 years. So it's only 25p a day to wear them. I bought, I brought them back on the 30th of 11, 2015, asking the staff to look at the broken metal, expecting help. Because I expected them to be nice to me because they'd be nice to me selling them to me. I did not ask for an offer of a repair, replacement, or refund. Or part refund. As a young man from the reception desk sat me down and refused to offer me anything, expecting me to buy a new pair of glasses, taking no responsibility for the poor design of the frames that failed, I asked to meet the manager. Always go to the manager. A deputy manager also looked at me and gave me replies to questions I had not made and refused to take any liability for the poor design. Nor, after me mentioning it, make me an offer under the Sale of Goods Act 1979. Just remember that. That goods should be of satisfactory quality, you know, that work, fit for purpose, you know, you can put, they'll stay on your head with one, with both arms, and as described, top classes, it will last you a lifetime. My rights have been breached because the item you sold me is faulty in design. Obvious. It's broke. I would have accepted a repair if I just changed that bit of metal. Replacement. Now, I find out that they still make them. They're going to they're ordering me another pair. But they're going to make me pay for them and make a profit of £100 twice for the frame. At 140 pounds, eh? My rights have been breached because the item you sold me is faulty in design. I would have accepted a repair, replacement, or part refund. Now, you can ask for one of those three, but they decide which one they give you. But none was offered at the time, expecting me to buy a new frame and lenses. They're in business, they thought, silly old man. You'll have to buy a new pair off us. But we've got the internet now. I didn't realize Tesco's and uh, Asda do even better ch range of glasses and a lot cheaper. I could only then ask for the manufacturer's address so I could negotiate a replacement frame at a discount 
as it was not of satisfactory quality, as the new frames have a solid metal hinge, not a bent piece of metal that was brittle and broke with when bent accidentally. Yeah, the new frames on sale aren't just a piece of bent metal. They're, you know, they're screwed pieces together. Solid metal, not a piece of wire that's been bent. But you don't need to know the details of it. But uh, they'll be watching this. Uh, really, before the uh, county court. I was never offered this, nor did I agree to this contract to purchase new frames. So I phone up today to get the, name, uh, the address of the manufacturer and I find they're buying me a new pair of frames without me entering into a contract. So I am sadly asking for my money back in full to compensate me for the breach of the sale of Goods Act 1979 by ignoring my rights, because they didn't make me an offer, by forcing me to pay for a new pair of frames and damages for corporate offenders. I'm sorry, I've lost the website. Fraud Act 2006. This is for the directors of this company are facing Fraud Act 2006, Section 1, 6, and 7. You fraud by abuse of position, you know, whatever it is. And conspiracy to defraud common law. So that's damages. But the others, the Fraud Act, that's 10 years imprisonment they're now facing. And I'll lock them up because we've got the summonses online to send them. And fraudulent misrepresentations, criminal fraud. So if, you, if they cause me a loss by the misrepresentation, that's a criminal fraud. By failing to give me the address of the frames importers or manufacturer, she, the manager, committed fraud by failing to disclose information. They have to tell you. Now, I've been talking to the guy selling me glasses on this uh, new website, and, uh, and he wants all the measurements as well as the prescription. But what's not on the prescription is the distance between the pupils. So that's where the center of the glasses have to be, of the of the lens. It's a circular lens that they shape. Now that distance isn't on the prescription, so you can't take the prescription to a different optician to have them made up for you. So he said phone them up and uh, get this distance, because somebody would have to do it for you. You can't do it yourself. And uh, they refused. And they posted me my latest prescription by an email, but they refused to give me this distance. So I spoke to a manager, and I ended up signing a document claiming something, some exemption, for them to give me this distance. So that's another fraud I haven't added to the letter, withholding this distance. So I, I wouldn't be able to buy another pair of glasses elsewhere. That's a very big fraud, and I've, I've recorded it on my uh, phone. I'll, I'll play it to you, but uh, we're getting, it's getting a bit boring. A person is in breach of this section, failing to disclose information, if he dishonestly fails to disclose to another person information which he is under a legal duty to disclose, the distance, or where I, who, who, where, the address of the manufacturer of the frames. B intends by failing to disclose this information to make a gain for himself, so they've bought them to sell to me again without giving me the address, so I can't negotiate a cheaper price. Or another, to make a gain for, for them, himself or another, the boss. Or to cause loss to another, that's me. Or to expose another to a risk of loss. I'm exposed to a loss now. I haven't, they haven't caused me a loss by selling them to me. When I could have got a free pair from the manufacturer. So he doesn't get a, his name on this video. But I'll add his name to the title. Now, when you search online for information on... Um, 
Vision Express. The video, I think I just told you right at the beginning of this clip, is shown on the first page. And it might be the only video about Vision Express. So a lot of people will click on it. Now, they, they've made a profit of 500 pounds. How much are they going to lose in lost trade with people going, old people who've got a prescription from them, demanding the distance between pupils, pupil distance, and then going off to Asda and Tesco. And they'll do a prescription for you there too. So I think you've got to just forget them. It's an, even though she's from Bulgaria and knew of the sale of goods act, she made no offer and made no offer of any discount on the frames when buying them for me. So they're trained to be crooks. So they're going to prison. The directors are going to prison. I've got nothing better to do. I'm a New Zealander. Surfing all the time. Cycling up our mountains all the time. I'm stuck here in this country, waiting to be bought out of my penthouse flat for half a million so I can travel the world for the rest of my life. I was talking to my guy that sells me inks for my apprentice. And he's off to India for his holiday. As I'm unable to negotiate a partial refund, so I've been caused a loss. Being faced with paying the full price, thus she send me her name in full by return of post and the managers, and you and your directors are now liable for criminal proceedings, prosecutions as well. By ordering new frames at my expense without my agreement is a civil, civil and criminal offence under the Misrepresentation Act exists to protect consumers from false or fraudulent claims that induce you into buying something. They're trying to get me to buy new frames instead of replacing them themselves. Or entering into a contract and allows you to claim and allows you to claim damages. So they've entered me into a contract and that's going to cause me a loss. In the case of fraud and allows you to claim damages in the case of fraudulent misrepresentation. Fraudulent misrepresentation occurs when someone makes a statement that they know is untrue, or they make without believing it to, is true, or they make recklessly by not telling me I, I have a right for repair, replacement, or part repayment. If you enter a contract as a result of a fraudulent misrepresentation, then you can cancel the contract, claim damages, or both. <laughs> the Misrepresentation Act 1967 allows you, you to base your claim on negligence or on the fraud. So it's fraud, isn't it? Not giving me the name so I can call up the manufacturer and get a Get a free pair. In addition, when a misrepresentation claim is based on negligence, the law states that the person who made the misrepresentation has to prove the negligence. She has to prove I didn't. She didn't agree to send me the address of the of Polo. In other words, they must prove that they had reasonable grounds to believe the statement. And that they believe the facts represented were true. That I ordered a pair. Another, that I ordered a replacement set of frames. It could be negligent misrepresentation. This is a misrepresentation under the Misrepresentation Act 1967. It's a long time ago. When a statement is made carelessly or without reasonable grounds for believing it's, tr it's true. A negligent misrepresentation may fall under common law or under the Misrepresentation Act 1967. Financial loss may be recovered in some circumstances. Please cancel the contract to sell me replacement frames that was fraudulently made. Yours truly, Q Thompson, London. So give me some uh, feedback.
and an eighth. Do you want me to play the? You don't need to hear it. Uh, I've got it recorded on my phone. So what do I press to stop this? So I hope I just press.